So today I'm coming at you with the one millionth Iceland trip photo video on YouTube. I'm going to be making a bunch of unnecessary references to the Grainy Days video on Iceland and uh, generally doing my best to be mostly useless. Hopefully, if you're thinking about visiting Iceland, you'll learn some cool places you should stop, not that I went anywhere. All that out of the ordinary, and maybe I'll convince you to visit. As far as gear stuff, the shots are all on the 50 millimeter, which is a 40 equivalent pancake for the stuff in the city when I wanted to travel light, and then the rest is shot on the 3264 zoom, which is a 25250. So all of the photos and a good bit of the video are also going to be shot on the GFX. So when it's iPhone footage, which I also shot a bunch of, I'll mark it with a little gray border. Otherwise, you're seeing it through the GFX with a glimmer glass filter. In case you can't tell, I'm somewhere different right now going to be traveling between different places for the next handful of months, so the already low production values of this channel will somehow drop even more. First day, stumbled off of the plane at something like 5 in the morning in Reykjavik, technically Keflavik, went to the rental car place, talked to them, declined all the extra insurance that they tried to sell you, and grabbed a bite, went over to the Blue Lagoon because it's right by the airport. I don't have any footage from the Blue Lagoon because it feels really creepy to shoot video of people being half naked, but here are some photos of random Creative Commons photographers. And then we went over and checked into our hotel. We Our hotel was called Hotel Odinsvi. It's simple but nice. And throughout our trip rates were actually pretty affordable because we were traveling in the beginning of May and tourist season is more like July, August. From there we were half dead from getting like less than an hour of sleep, so went over to Reykjavik Roasters, which was consistently great. Really recommend Reykjavik Roasters, and we had a washed Ethiopian coffee called Haru, and we forced our confused stomachs to absorb some fish and chips, which at the time was kind of exciting, and slight spoiler alert, but uh, at the end of the eight days, safe to say I would not want to eat any more fish and chips. Since it was right there, we also stopped by the famous church, I'm gonna butcher a whole lot of names in this video, Hallgrimskirkja. Fun fact about the church, the little columns outside are inspired by the basalt columns in Iceland that uh, appear naturally from volcanic activity, and you'll see some of those basalt columns later. So after relaxing a fair bit and getting a bunch of sleep, we set out for day two, which was our first real day, and wanted to walk around Reykjavik a fair bit, but it was pretty rainy and cold and windy, so we walked around a little. We made our first stop in Grainy Day's favorite Icelandic juice shop, Lemon, which had um, shockingly good juice. You would not expect good produce in a, well, place where you can't really grow much produce, but um, yeah, the juices there were really good. Their juices were mostly inspired by Tarantino films, and so I had a Winston Wolf, which was a green juice basically, and um, I also had a lot of love, which was like a green apple green juice, which was super delicious. That evening I still had some energy to burn and was willing to deal with the weather, so went out and walked around for maybe an hour and a half or so, just going sort of up and down the hills and down toward the water, back up, etc. around Reykjavik. Personally, I found it really interesting to photograph because there's a lot of verticality since it's built on a hill, and there's a very long period of good light. Not a lot of stereotypical sort of west coast golden hour exploding pink skies light, but just pleasant, soft, diffused by clouds with some directionality, not totally boring overcast light. So day three, we headed out for the more nature-y stuff. We were debating whether to do the whole ring road, but decided against it because it would have been a whole lot of driving. So we started off going out to the Snæfellsnes Peninsula and then gradually worked our way across the south of the island. So only about half of the island. Honestly, starting the day, I was a little bit intimidated because it was like 34-ish Fahrenheit, so like zero C, and there were some worries about like black ice on the roads, but there's a great website called safetravel.is and it'll tell you where the road's frozen over so you can um, 
be a little less worried about your car skidding off the road. So there's a fair bit of driving and then we got to a black church. It's a common place where, you know, people take photos for Instagram or whatever or traditional landscapes and I couldn't help myself from taking a few photos and then stopped in a quote unquote town village Arnar Stoppy and had more fish and chips and then went and checked in at the Foss Hotel in Hilnar. And I briefly walked around a bit trying to grab some photos. Um, there's a really beautiful view out the window of our hotel, but I couldn't quite make sense of the signage about private property and stuff, and I didn't want to be rude or something, I don't know. And I was also just dead from driving, so headed back. We also stopped briefly by the national park that was just a few kilometers away and grabbed some golden hour pictures in wind where you had to hold your car door so it would not blow off. Day four, we focused on doing outdoor stuff in the peninsula. So there's a park called Snaefels Yokel Park, and we stopped at a bunch of places. Black Sand Beach with some wreckage from a shipwreck a hundred years ago, a pretty cool crater, and a couple other miscellaneous stops. Um, got stopped by gravel roads a few times because I didn't want to spend a bunch of money paying for gravel damage. On the way out of the park, we stopped in Helisandur, which could easily be missed, but was really interesting with houses built onto hilly territory and a river flowing through the middle of it. Also, well-known, weird, Icelandic murals. Reached the highlight of the day, which was Kirkufell, aka Game of Thrones Mountain. Super pretty, and there's a spot where everyone walks over and grabs a photo of Kirkufell with a Kirkufell Foss waterfall in the foreground. And one of the fun things about Iceland is you get different scenery depending on the season to a, well, a bigger extent than in other places, so... Since we're visiting sort of in the transition to spring slash summer, we got an icy Kirkufell with a flowing waterfall. If you go in the winter, you get a snowy mountain with no waterfall. And in the summer, you get a like grassy green mountain with a flowing waterfall. So anyway, we eventually made our way through the rest of the peninsula, passed through basically Reykjavik on our way to the Golden Circle, which is where some of the biggest attractions in Iceland are. And Stopped at Kareth Crater where there are these uh, iron deposits all along the side of the crater and some minerals or something, I don't know, uh, leach from the water from the side of the crater into the water and you get this super deep cerulean water. That night, checked into Hotel Borealis. It's a small kind of 70s vibe hotel, little bit of the shining vibes just because of the era and the fact that you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and there's like 70s wood everywhere and spent a decent bit of time walking around outside, taking photos of the various buildings at the hotel with the Icelandic backgrounds and just listening to the still peaceful Icelandic air. Even in Iceland, honestly, it's easy to get trapped in the sort of go from place to place to place. And at night when you're at the hotel, you can kind of relax. You have nothing else to do. Just walk around and appreciate the nature. Day five was our Golden Circle day, so Golden Circle's three of the biggest attractions in Iceland. First one is Thingvalir which is uh, where the continental plates meet and also where some very important congress happened of Vikings like a thousand years ago. And apparently it's very pretty to look at the plates if you scuba dive, we do not. And other than that, it's very well maintained, but honestly wasn't super memorable for me. Next up is Geyser, after which all of our modern geysers are named and caught the other geyser called Stroker. Um, yeah, erupting, and then went to the thing that I was probably most excited for on the trip, which was Gullfoss. 
So Gullfoss is arguably the most famous waterfall in Iceland, and it is very powerful, and it also has these elegant, small, little waterfalls at the top, and the combination of the huge, powerful waterfall pushing up tons of water vapor and mist, and the elegant little waterfalls at the top, and the fact that you can literally walk right up next to the waterfall and appreciate it and get all the mist on you. It's a really special place, and it was even more impressive because we showed up when it was snowing, which admittedly not the coziest, but made the waterfall even more intimidating and powerful and imposing. On the way through the rest of the Golden Circle, we went to Faxi, which is Granny Day's favorite Icelandic waterfall and pretty small waterfall, very elegant, nice to stop by. Unfortunately, apparently closed because not peak season, so we had to double park, run in, check out the waterfall for a minute, and then leave because I don't like violating traffic laws in other countries. To close out the night, did a couple classic Icelandic things. First, we stopped in the Vinbuthen, which is the state-owned liquor store, grabbed some four dollar cans of beer and then went to bonus which is the discount grocer where you discover that actually food in iceland can be cheap the next morning was on to the final leg of our iceland trip which was eastern iceland so on the way to Vik, which is the home of iceland's most famous black sand beach we stopped at Seljalandfoss, which is this super tall spindly not ultra powerful, but pretty um, waterfall, which you can get up and walk behind. And fair warning, you will get soaked. Your camera will get soaked. I um, found a bit of mist in my EVF, which worried me, but it was fine. And the second bonus waterfall on the way to Vic is Skogafoss, which is a super classic, wide, powerful waterfall really pretty. There are a bunch of birds and like moss growing on the side of it. Absolutely worth the stop. When we got to Vic, we encountered specialty coffee for the first time in days. Went to School Beans with a K, which is a coffee shop built in a school bus. And the two women who run the shop were super nice and brewed surprisingly good coffee and also tea. And they also have chocolate stuff, a little bit of everything. And from there we went to Reynes Fiara Beach, which is a combination of uh, beautiful basalt columns, caves, and a black sand beach. Yeah, I don't know. I think either half of either the beach or the, the caves by themselves would be a landmark somewhere else, but Iceland one-ups it and you get a two-for-one. And for me, looking at the caves with the beach in the background, it's just super pretty. and. If you walk a little bit along the caves, uh, you can get a little bit less crowding and stop, sit down for a minute, and enjoy the views. Standard warning though, um, beware the tides, don't walk out too far. There have been a number of tourists who've died on the beach, so uh, yeah. That night we pulled into Hotel Laki, which is by a lake. Shocking. Grabbed more fish for dinner. Attempted to go to um, what is probably most easily described as Justin Bieber Canyon, but um, I will attempt to pronounce here so uh, I can laugh at myself. Fjoth Rar Gluvor Canyon. Uh, but there was a big intense gravel path in front of it and I was panicked that I was going to like break one of my tires open and turned around, went back to the hotel in defeat, went for a walk by the lake. Honestly, these just peaceful night walks by pleasant but not like landmark scenery were some of my favorite times on the trip. Just relaxing, not trying to get anywhere, walking around, taking some photos, appreciating the stillness of Iceland. And that night, psyched myself up, 
read some articles saying, oh, you can you can get to the canyon even in a two-wheel drive car, and we had a not particularly outdoor, but at least all-wheel drive SUV. Next morning, gritted my teeth, made it to the canyon, and walked around. Have to be honest, in springtime, early spring, the moss is not fully green and like the grass or whatever hasn't grown in, so the canyon wasn't quite as pretty as in some of the photos I saw of it. Of course, it's always going to be way more impressive in person than in pictures, but I do think that it would have been pretty if we visited a month or two later when the, everything was beautifully green. By this point, all the cold, dry air was starting to irritate my wife's asthma, so um, we skipped this stop at a basalt waterfall called Svartifoss that made it to our final real stop of the trip, which was Yokol Sarlon, aka the Glacier Lagoon, and it is this weird place where there's a glacier next to a lake, and the glaciers break off into the lake and slowly make their way toward the beach. And so you also have a beach called Diamond Beach where you can walk right out and see glaciers, little bits of glaciers bumping up into the coast and little bits of ice, quote unquote diamonds, on the shore. Found both of these incredibly beautiful, serene. Even with all the tourists around, I think everyone is kind of in a trance looking at the natural stuff. <laughs> From there, we just headed back to the hotel, grabbed some sleep, final day, drove back to Keflavik and uh, stopped in School Bean, stopped back at, at um, Rainis Fjara Beach. Very importantly, we stopped for an Icelandic hot dog, which um, tasted like a hot dog, and the shop had a very creepy hot dog man as its mascot. To close out the trip, had our last two Icelandic beers, and... Uh, that was the trip. So I guess it's time to wrap up. I have to say, I expected to be impressed by Iceland, but I was blown away. It's just the most beautiful, serene, natural place I've ever been to. And I think any of the sort of big three things we did, or my top three anyway, which I'm basic apparently because it was Gullfoss, Rainis Fjara Beach, and the Glacier Lagoon for me. Any of those would have justified the trip. The fact that we got all three within a couple days of each other is just insane. Plus, it's not just these occasional cool things. The All of the scenery is pretty, and there are a bunch of like random roadside waterfalls that would be destinations in themselves if they were anywhere other than Iceland. I was also a big fan of the Snæfellsnes Peninsula because it was a bit less crowded, more quiet, and just the density of cool stuff was super high, even if the coolest things there weren't quite as impressive as the nicest things in the south. So yeah, safe to say I will be back in Iceland at some point. I want to do the ring road, do the north, do a couple more days. Hope you enjoyed the video. As I said, I'm going to be mixing up the videos a bit because I don't have all of my equipment while I'm traveling. So hope you enjoy the variety. And if you like the video, you can do the YouTube things, post videos about once a month, appreciate all of your support. And um, yeah, that's it. Until next time. See you later.